Hello everybody, welcome to another video. I purchased this set of side tables from Facebook Marketplace. He was asking $180, asked if he would take $150, which he accepted. It is a little bit high for these, but it's so rare for me to come across two of them. They're not in the best condition, they are sturdy, and they have a look that really appeals to me, but I have a lot of work to do here. Finding two of these at the same time gave me a lot of different options and my vision for these pieces changed quite a bit as I went through the process of redoing them. So let's go on a journey. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Before I can do anything, I need to get these pieces clean. There were these little rubber cord guides stuck all over them. I don't know what this is. It looks like a fried egg or a flat boob. I'm not sure. <laughs> these took quite a while to clean up. So as I'm showing you here what I was doing, I'm going to talk a little bit about what was going on in my head at the time. So I was initially thinking that I would redo these as a set of oversized nightstands. They're a little bit taller than most vintage nightstands you find, and even though these aren't literally vintage, these were made, I think, in 2014. With the apothecary style drawers, it has a bit of a vintage look. The problem is, they're not quite as deep as a normal nightstand, and I wasn't sure if that would be practical. As well as these top three drawers, which are all small, I wasn't sure how well that would work. So then I thought maybe this would be a great opportunity to do two completely different looks. I was thinking maybe of doing one sort of farmhouse vintage and doing the other one like super glam, a beautiful deep color and maybe like gold handles and a little bit blingy if you will. It's not really my style but I thought this would be a cool thing to do with these two pieces. I actually posted on my community feed on my YouTube channel and asked for opinions of what to do and it was quite split. It was about half of the people saying keep them together and the other half saying do something completely different with them. But I came to the decision of doing them separately but as you'll see shortly that didn't really pan out. I do believe that these pieces were initially sold at a department store like Target. They have a partial wood frame and the rest is MDF. There is a very thin layer on the top and sides as well as the front of these trim pieces that is a cheap veneer or some sort of textured laminate. I think it's veneer but I don't think it's anything that would be worth saving. So my best option for these would be to paint them. I am going to be reusing the hardware, I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do with it. They're very small little poles and they match the scale of these perfectly. Now I know you're probably sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, it's been three and a half minutes just of cleaning. <laughs> these two pieces actually took me about an hour and a half to clean, so that's the extremely condensed version. They were pretty gross. So for one of these pieces, my plan was to remove the legs and this little bit of trim here and add wheels. So the wheels would sit down on this lower trim area right here. That was my plan. As I mentioned, things didn't exactly go to plan. So first I removed all of the screws. I had a feeling that this would also be glued down, but I didn't expect it to be quite as bad as it was. I was able to pry part of it up, but I ended up breaking the lower section, which is a huge bummer. There was no way for me to separate these. It just, it was too well put together, strangely enough. So now I am without a lower trim section. So this obviously greatly changed my plan for this piece. And that's the aftermath. <laughs> These were glued down, doweled down, and nailed down. Not bad for such a cheap piece of furniture. I cut off the dowels flush and removed all of the brad nails. 
made a few repairs. And this was what I was left with. So at this point, I started to think <laughs> more about what I was going to do. I knew I was going to replace the tops. I could have sanded them down and painted them, but I decided that I was going to try to put these two pieces together and make one cabinet out of it. And I would be replacing the bottom and replacing the tops and adding wheels. So I had to deconstruct the base of the other one. On this one, this back piece of trim was stuck to the bottom frame, so I had to remove that and then glue and tack that back on to the back. Now, the difficulty with removing the tops is that, well, it's the same problem, actually. I know it's going to be glued on, and I don't want to break this trim, so I have to do this <laughs> a bit diligently. Start first by trying to get a putty knife in there, and then I can just hammer it off. Thankfully, the tops were a lot easier than the bottoms. spots that needed some repair so I'm using some epoxy to do that. Wood glue is not really going to work on MDF. My apologies for my head in the way there. I was able to pop this back on and just clamp it while it dried. Because the trim had been glued to most of the frame here, I had to chisel off a little bit to get it smooth and then grabbed my sander and an 80 grit pad and smoothed it out even more. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Please consider hitting that subscribe button if you like this sort of content. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I appreciate each and every one of you. So here's where we're at at this point. I'm now measuring for my top and bottom. As much as I would have loved to put a really nice piece of wood on the top, yeah, this isn't happening. <laughs> I came home with some pine. Pine is fine. Even though these two pieces will be attached at the top and bottom, I need to make sure that they stay tightly together. So I'm pre-drilling some screw holes in this middle section here so that I can screw them together. I used my miter saw to cut the boards for the bottom. I could have done an entire flat bottom, but I don't think I will need that. This should be just fine, and I'm going to attach them together with some wood glue and pocket screws. This Craig jig makes quick work of adding the pocket holes. And if you would like a more in-depth view of this tool, which is awesome, I will link to another video down below where I go more into detail about it and how to use it. Putting the pieces of the frame together was pretty straightforward. I just added some wood glue on the joints and then screwed them in place. And then it was time to add it to the bottom of my new cabinet. I used a couple of long clamps to hold it in place while I pre-drilled my screw holes. Because the boards of the frame are fairly thin, I used a lot more screws than I normally would have if they were normal sized boards inside, but I wanted to make sure this would stay on properly and help keep the piece sturdy. I gave the base a light sanding with a 180 grit sand pad and my Surf Prep 3x4 Ray sander. I didn't want sharp edges on this so I used the sander to slightly round over the corners and all of the edges. This new base will be painted, not stained, 
and I just put the bottom two drawers in just to make sure everything cleared and everything looks great. So now it's time to flip the cabinet right side up again and get to work on the top. I purchased this laminated pine panel and these are great for replacement tops when you don't need anything super fancy. I always check both sides. You can see on the underside here there was quite a few pitch pockets so I ended up using the other side. All I had to do now was just measure the length I wanted and I had to cut a little bit off the width as well and I just took it outside and used my circular saw for that. I flipped the piece upside down again so that I was able to pre-drill my holes and I had no choice but to go a little bit on an angle here just because of the position of the frame but that's okay. Just make sure when you're doing this that you don't go too deep. I also used a countersink bit to create a small pocket for the head of the screw to fit in so that it didn't interfere with my drawers at all. Once I had the top securely attached, I flipped everything right side up again and got to work sanding the top. I used 180 grit to do so and I did the same rounding of the edges and corners as I did on the bottom, but there will be an extra step on this top and <laughs> it might be a little controversial. While I don't know if I can pull off making this piece look 150 years old, I do want it to look like it's been through some stuff. <laughs> I'm going to be painting the drawers and the base, and I'm going to be staining the top. I'm going to be doing kind of a different treatment on the handles. I'm not sure yet how it's going to pan out, but I have to clean them up first. So that's what I'm doing here with a degreaser, then rinsing them off and drying them. So this is a rust kit that I've had for quite a while, but I've never actually used it. There's three parts. There is a primer, there's an iron paint, and then there is the rust activator spray. So the first thing I did was add the primer, and then I did two coats of the iron, and it doesn't have to be perfect. As you know, rust generally isn't perfect, so there are a few spots here where a little bit of the primer is still showing through. I'm okay with that. While those are drying, I'm going to get to painting this piece. I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Everett, which is one of their new colors, and a Fusion brush. These brushes have really soft bristles and will make quick work of this. I think it took me about 15 minutes per coat, and I did two coats of paint. And of course, Nacho had to come and make sure everything was good. <laughs> so once the iron paint had set, I went ahead and used the rust activator spray. You're supposed to spray it on, wait five minutes, and then spray again. And as you can see here, I also did a little bit on the wheels. And then you wait. <laughs> And this is just a quick time lapse over about 15 minutes. You can see how it takes effect. And while this sort of yellowish color, it's cool, but it's not quite what I was expecting and it's not quite what I wanted. So I'm going to experiment a little bit here. I added some dark wax, first of all, which would get rid of most of the yellow. <laughs> Again, like I said, this is my first time using this, so I wasn't really sure what was going to happen with it. But I used a little bit of Odie's Safer Solvent on a shop towel, and I took it back a bit. I removed a little bit of the wax, a little bit of the iron paint, and a little bit of the primer, and exposed the metal underneath. And you end up with this really neat, worn look, almost like someone's thumb has grabbed this every day for the last, you know, 50 years. What's nice about this too is you can sort of tweak it to your liking. So I didn't have any single pull that was the same as another pull. Y'all, this is so far outside of what I normally do, but I'm really having fun with this.
So this is the controversial part I was talking about. What am I doing with all of these tools? I am basically trying to age this top. This is a brand new piece of pine and I don't want it to look brand new. I'm using a bunch of different tools and techniques to gouge, dent, scrape, and put holes in this wood. This tool is great for making faux wormholes. And I could have taken this in a completely different direction and gone high-end, upscale, modern apothecary, but I've been looking at that rust kit for a while and then I found these and I just, this is kind of where I ended up. I'm going to be using two different stains, well, <laughs> three technically, but you'll see in a minute. First off, I'm starting with Aged Oak by Minwax. I had a little bit left in this can that I wanted to use up, and then I opened up a new can. This is going to give me the lightest tones in this piece that I'm looking for, and then I'm going to switch to Coffee, which is a darker color. I'm making sure to push the stain down into all those little holes and cracks I created. You'll see me apply this to the whole top, and then wipe it back in certain areas. If you think of like an old antique store counter, <laughs> you always have a darker edge along the front. It's just where things tend to get dirty and grimy. And I'm not trying to copy that exactly, but that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. So I left a little bit of a darker edge around. The areas that I needed to lighten even more, I just used a little bit of the OD Safer solvent and wiped the stain back. Now that I'm happy with the top, I need to look at the sides. I could have used a dark wax or an antiquing wax or a glaze to sort of grunge this up a little bit. I'm opting to use the same stain that I initially used on the top, which is Aged Oak by Minwax. It's just going to settle into what remains of the grain pattern and uh, I'm going to wipe it right back. It's time to add the wheels now to the base. I'm getting super excited because I'm in the home stretch. I'm using some of Fusion's beeswax and hemp oil combo to seal the paint once everything was dry. The only thing I found the top was missing was that sort of warm amber glow that you get from old pine as it patinas over time. Once I get the paint sealed, I'm going to work on the top. The only thing it's missing for me is that warm amber glow and of course not Joe has to be in the middle of everything. So what I opted to put on the top was a stain and sealer in one and it's just going to give it that nice warm patinaed look. Well, there are so many things I wanted to do with this set. My vision for them changed several times and I ended up with a piece that looks nothing like what I started with, but I'm super happy with it. In fact, I'm not even sure I want to sell it. I'm quite interested to see what you guys think of what I did. One thing's for sure, this piece is one of a kind now. I still have to find some drawer liners for these so that will be something you won't see in the reveal, but it is something I have to do. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and comment if you like what you see here today, and I will see you next time.